Hey YouTube, this is Lucy from kbeautyharbor.com. Today's video was inspired by a few different YouTubers I follow. Most of them are focusing on minimalism. And several of them have made videos recently about objects that they only own one of. And I thought I'd go ahead and make a skincare edition of that. Before we even get started, I would love to know how all of you are holding up how you're spending your days, what changed in your life in the last weeks as it relates to quarantine and social distancing. I was putting my makeup on just now to do the video and my six-year-old looked at me and said, Mom, why are you wasting all that makeup? You have nowhere to go. And she's right, I have nowhere to go. The highlight of the last probably three weeks for me was a Costco trip yesterday. If you followed me on any of my social media, Instagram or my blog or my Facebook group, Korean Beauty Fanatics, you probably realize that I have a ton of skincare and I do have a video with a walkthrough of all the different things that I own. But in today's video, I want to focus on things that I only own one of and give you a brief explanation as to why. There's really no reason to own multiple things of the same type of product. Sometimes it makes sense to have several toners or several face washes or several creams if your skin behaves differently throughout the day or through different seasons. But there are certain things that I only own one of and there are reasons for that. So the first thing that I usually just have one of at a time are peeling pads. This one right now that I have is a Wamisa Charcoal Chai Tea Pore Refining Glow Pad. To be completely honest, I just opened these, so I have not used these yet. I used to have Neogen peeling pads, and then now I have these. The reason I don't have more than one jar at a time, and I might have more than one, but the extras are sealed and they're just waiting for their turn, so I don't open them all at once and I don't use them all at once. And that's because there's just really no reason to do it for me. Healing pads are exfoliating products that are meant to remove dead skin cells and any kind of debris that are left behind by regular cleansing. I usually use peeling gels one to two times a week and then maybe one time a week a peeling pad. And all of the products that I've tried of this nature have at least 30 pads in a box. Let's see, this one has 25. So using that one time a week, that is a lot of weeks. And so I don't think I could go through two packages or three packages if I'm using them simultaneously before the things expire. Like this one here looks like is good for eight months after opening. And so I'm going to do my best to use that up in eight months or somewhere close to that. So there's just really no reason to open another package of peeling pads before these ones are done. The next type of product that I usually only have one of at a time are eye patches. And very similar to the peeling pads, Eye patches are only good for a certain amount of weeks or months after they've been opened and usually that shelf life is quite short. While on skincare products such as creams or toners, usually they're good for a year after opening. Oftentimes the patches are only good for a couple of months. These ones right now are every days that I have. I was trying to see if there is a little thing on here about when they expire but there isn't i keep mine in the fridge and i usually use them up oh in maybe like two or three months it just really depends i seem to go through phases of using eye patches all the time and then just kind of forgetting about them but when i use them i use them under my eyes around my nasolabial folds and also on my forehead so basically anywhere that is prone to fine lines and wrinkles anything that needs to be plumped so i do tend to use quite a few of them at a time usually six so two under my eyes, two on the nasal labial folds, and two on the forehead. And sometimes it's just one on the forehead. But even with that kind of use, still, I usually do not open more than one jar at a time because I do not want to have them go bad before I get to them. Next is makeup primer. Currently, I have this Laneige serum. It's a glow serum, but it's basically a makeup primer. It goes right after sunscreen, but before makeup. I actually technically have two of these, but the only reason is that my friend gave me hers because she didn't like it. So I have a backup one in my fridge. But typically I wouldn't get more than one makeup primer at a time because I don't wear makeup very often. And even when I do, 
as far as the foundation type products go, I usually just stick with a powder, which doesn't necessarily require primer. This primer is kind of a different story. It gives you a glow even if you are just using powder. So I still use this even if I don't do cushion or any kind of base product. But with most makeup primers, there's really no reason to wear them unless you're wearing them under BB cream or some sort of foundation. So for the same reason as the other two products, I just would hate to have something and have it go bad. And even a small tube of primer lasts me a very long time, so I just stick to one at a time. Another type of product that I usually just have one up at a time is a spot treatment. I currently have this one. It's by Listerm. If you can see it, it is a pimple spot treatment that is meant to make breakouts heal faster and reduce redness and it can be applied to small or large areas that are having problems, irritation, breakouts, those things. So it's a tube like this. It is a liquid in there with some powder in it and it doesn't take much at all to cover a large area. So I think this will last me quite a long time, especially since I don't break out very often. And so just one is enough for me. When this runs out, I will look for something else. I also sometimes just have pimple patches and don't have any kind of other spot treatments. And usually those are also sufficient, but this was sent to me in a PR box and I thought it was very interesting. And I am liking this, especially if I have a larger affected area, something too large for a pimple patch but I wouldn't necessarily stock up on this myself. I usually would just use pimple patches and then different serums and toners with Centella in it. But since this was sent to me, I do like it and I do use it. I typically only have one eye care product at a time. Eye creams and eye lotions. Are there eye lotions? Maybe, anyway. Eye creams usually come in tubes that look deceivingly small but last forever and I normally use them not just around my eyes but also on my neck because eye creams tend to be more nourishing than the face creams that I buy because I have combination skin. So the face creams that I tend to buy are usually aimed to control the oil production and such and they're maybe not as nourishing as what my neck would like because the skin on the neck is different. Currently using this Elancilia CPP cream. I haven't had it for too long so I can't really speak very much about it yet as far as a review. I do like it though. It is nice and light. It doesn't bother my eyes. I have oily eyelids and sometimes I can even sweat on my eyes and anything that is too heavy just does not feel good but this feels good and I keep using it so so far the first impressions are very positive I don't really have many problems around my eyes so I basically just approach this as a preventative measure I mean I think it's it's good to take care of your eye skin I also think that with a good overall kind of all-purpose moisturizer you can definitely get away with putting that on your eyes and that should be just fine and much cheaper. So I know that there's somewhat a debate between makeup artists and dermatologists or among makeup artists and among dermatologists and among different skincare gurus. Some really love the idea of uh, an eye cream and then others say that it's unnecessary that you're just overpaying for a moisturizer that is packaged in a smaller tube. I'm kind of undecided. I think that if it makes you happy, go for it. But if it's not in your budget, then just a regular moisturizer that you use on your face should also work just fine on the eyes. I have only one eye makeup remover product. The reason being that I typically just use a cleansing oil or a cleansing balm to remove my eye makeup. However, in the recent months, I've acquired not one, not two, but three. Is it three? Two. Wow. I can't remember. No, three. Three. It's three. <laughs> wow. I have not touched my makeup drawer in a while, so it's all hazy now, but I have three waterproof mascaras and they do not budge with cleansing oils or cleansing balms, or at least not with the ones that I have. So I did buy a special makeup remover and it's this Misha one, but I only have one. There's just really no reason for me to have multiple different eye makeup removers. They all would do the same thing as far as I'm concerned. All I need for it to do is to remove makeup, gently but effectively and preferably quickly without having to use multiple cotton pads and doing multiple goes at it and this one does it 
very well so i think when i run out if my mascaras are still around if i still have the waterproof ones i would just repurchase this one maybe i'll try something else but we'll see this one is good and it's cheap it's a misha perfect lip and eye makeup remover i only have one scalp spray in the past i've had more than one at a time but it makes it really difficult to figure out if something is actually if one of those products is actually doing anything for your scalp so I would actually even if I had two of them opened I would still focus on just using one and then the other one would just sit there unused so now I stop that and I just buy one at a time and then if I'm running low or when I get close to the bottom I just go ahead and order something else or order the same thing the one I have currently is this Aromatica one unfortunately the label rubbed off quite a bit but it's their rosemary scalp spray and it cuts down on sebum production or normalizes it and it can kind of help with hair growth. It's really difficult to tell if how much it's helping. I do find it refreshing and pleasant to use and I do think it helps with just keeping the scalp healthy and keeping the sebum production under control so it's not as oily. And so in that regard, I really like the results. As far as like helping you have thicker hair or really longer hair, it's really, really hard to tell. I mean, it's hard to eliminate the placebo effect as well, but I like it, so I keep using it. Why not? It makes me happy. I only have one main vitamin C product. And when I say main vitamin C product, I mean a product that its primary purpose is to provide vitamin C into my routine. There are some things that I use that might have a vitamin C in the ingredients, but that's not the star ingredient. And the reason that I use vitamin C products is to control the hyperpigmentation I have. I have lots of freckles, I am very prone to freckles, and then I have one little pigmentation spot. I think it's post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, probably like from having a little zit somewhere here on my nose. Um, it is lightening up, thankfully. The product I have is this Neogen powder. I've talked about it before in a couple videos. You can look at my bathroom tour where I show all 45 of the different skincare products that I currently have, and this one is in there in detail. The reason I only have one vitamin C product is because vitamin C products are not very shelf stable. If it's a proper concentration of vitamin C, if it's not just a small additive at the end of an ingredients list, if it's really primarily a vitamin C product, it is not going to have a long shelf life. Vitamin C oxidizes, it's kind of finicky. I had the COSRX Triple C Lightning Serum, for example, that so, so many people love. And that one is made in small batches and it's shipped to you fairly quickly after production so it's not sitting on the shelf somewhere. It is packaged in a dark glass bottle and it comes in a black box to try and keep it away from the light. It needs to be refrigerated and even with all of that, once you open it, you start the clock and mine unfortunately ended up oxidizing before I could really use up all of it. When it's just slightly oxidized, when it goes from clear to slightly yellow, maybe to even a little bit more yellow, it can still be used. It's not as potent, but when it gets to the dark browns, you're basically done. And good vitamin C products are not cheap, like the lightning, the, that triple C lightning serum, is. it's not cheap. And I really didn't think that I got my money's worth. This powder, however, is shelf stable and it does not need to be refrigerated. It is added to any product of your choice before use. So I added to a toner and apply it to my skin right after cleansing. And this has been working wonderfully for me. It's not oxidizing, it keeps its potency. It sits in my bathroom so I actually remember to use it versus sitting in the fridge where I would have to go and grab it and think about that every time, which is where the disconnect was for me with the other serum. With that said, there's really absolutely no reason for me to have more than one vitamin C product that are both oxidizing. I do want to remind you though that I'm not a dermatologist, I am not a cosmetologist, I'm an accountant, I'm also not your mom, so I can't tell you what to do. And if you are doing something different from what I'm doing and it's working for you, that's lovely. I'd love to hear about it, let me know in the comments. I think there's definitely room for lots and lots of different ways to do skincare and if you found something that works for you, stick with it. These are just my opinions and maybe they're helpful for some, but if you have some other way that you're doing it and it's working for you, then great. I only have one peel off mask and it's this one by Misha. There are a couple of reasons why. Reason number one is I have a hard time fitting these masks into my routine. On a typical evening, 
my evening skincare is my time to relax it's the time where nobody's touching me usually the children are either in bed or with my husband and i double cleanse my face i get into a hot full bathtub i put on a sheet mask or a wash off mask and then watch some youtube videos and when i'm done i get out and i put the rest of my skincare on and that's it peel off masks can't really be used in the tub the water the steam and everything in the small enclosed bathroom space makes the air way too humid and so this never sets and it never dries so for me to use this i have to use it basically after i double cleanse but obviously before sheet mask before anything else so for me it's just not working super great and also it can be a little bit painful depending on how intense the peel off pack is if you use it on the periphery of your face and if you have peach fuzz like i do can be kind of intense to take that off so i usually only use it in the t-zone i've had this tube for a long time it's still good i mean it still smells fine and it works fine it's not giving me any reactions but i haven't been able to use it up all the way still it's my goal actually to finish this off finally but i don't think i'm buying any more peel off packs i think they provide good skin entertainment, so the entertainment value of doing skincare, but I think there are better ways to gently exfoliate and cleanse the face. I think just double cleansing and peeling gels and certain exfoliating masks or even overnight exfoliating masks, those usually do a good enough job for me that I don't feel the need for these. However, obviously peel off packs give you the immediate feeling of very smooth very velvety soft skin so i do like the after effect of this i just think there are let's say simpler ways to achieve that that i can still do while sitting in my hot tub which is what the ultimate goal is <laughs> i only have one lip mask and the reason is at least the ones i've tried i've had the laneige lip sleeping mask and now i have this jayastina one they pretty much to me do the same thing there might be a variation in scent or packaging or volume or price, maybe ingredients. But the ones that I've tried and also lip balms uh, that are both Korean and not Korean, they're mostly all very, very similar. And the pots, especially the Laneige one, are pretty large. So it's quite hard to finish one even if I'm using the same one consistently every day but to be honest, I don't remember to use these things every day. It's maybe a few times a week or whenever my lips just get horrendously dry and I have to do something. So I've really been focusing on just doing one at a time. And I think lip products are one of those categories that is so easy to overbuy. I'm not very into decorative makeup, but even I own way too many lipsticks, lip glosses, lip tints, and, and those things, way too many for one person. And so it's way, very tempting for me to go ahead and buy another lip sleeping mask, another one, another one. I've seen good reviews for some Amand products, for example, that I want, but I try to stop myself every time because it might seem like it's a small package, because it is. There's just it's this little pot. But honestly, I've used this for months now, and I only made a small dent. So I've been focusing in 2020 on really appreciating the things that I have and focusing on liking and enjoying them and getting the full use out of them instead of constantly chasing the next exciting new package or the next product, constantly getting that adrenaline rush from online shopping and then the delivery and unpacking and introducing things to my routine. That's partially how I ended up with so many products, partially it's from PR, but I'm really focusing on paring that down, on getting rid of things that are not working, using up the things that are working, and just really taking the time to appreciate each thing. Coincidentally, right now, with everything that's going on in the world, this approach is really working for me because even if I wanted to acquire a bunch of new things, I would probably have some issues there have been some shipping delays. Here in the United States, we're not as affected as some other countries. As far as I know, we're still accepting packages from overseas. Some other countries are not. But still, with the uncertainty and the economy and all the financial implications of the virus, it might not be the best idea to hoard skincare right now. And so I'm glad that 
I had this new for me way of thinking in place a month before any quarantine happened where I don't even want anything new right now. So I'm definitely taking this time right now to kind of pause, assess what I have and really enjoy that. And I'm not even looking very much at new things. Although I still have some new things coming in the mail just via PR, but that's really not because I went and bought it. That's because brands approached me proactively and offered me something new to try. And of course I say yes, because I like trying new things and then I like telling you about them. I only have one clay mask, but it's a wonderful clay mask. And I've had many, many other clay masks, but usually just one at a time. Because the primary purpose of a clay mask is to absorb some of the excess oil and skin sebum from the skin to normalize oil production and to give that cleansed, matte, but not overly dried feeling. And most of the good quality clay masks, while they are marketed differently, they're called different things, they're different colors, most of the good ones that I've had, they pretty much all do the same thing. So the result is pretty much the same. They might have different claims, like I said, different packaging, different designs, whatever. Every brand does its own thing to try and get the market share and to try to get the buyer to buy their product and not someone else's. So they all try to differentiate the best that they can. The one that I currently have is by I'm From. It's the I'm From Volcanic Mask. It is lovely so far. I've only used it a few times. I just recently opened it. I bought it a while back, but it was sitting in my too open kind of area and waiting its turn patiently. But it's this lovely kind of pinkish color and a creamy consistency. And another reason why I don't have more than one of these open at a time is because clay masks eventually do dry out. It does take them some time. I haven't really had one go bad on me this way. I haven't had one completely dry out to a point of being unusable. But I have seen people online receive old products sometimes by mistake, in error, or just because the seller maybe wasn't really upfront about how old their stock was. And an old dried out clay mask is pretty much unusable. It cracks. You can try and revive it. You can try and add some water. You can you can really try to rehydrate it, but I would rather not get to that point. So I even if I buy more than one mask at a time, I keep them sealed and basically in my kind of backup, what would you call it? Yeah, I guess a backup backup storage, backup this is why I shouldn't do videos in the evenings. My brain is completely shut off today, especially being Sunday night. Wow. But anyway, so I have some sometimes waiting their turn. If I have, if I find a good sale or something like that, I might buy more than one thing. I'm trying not to do that though, because what ends up happening is I end up accumulating all these things and they just sit and sit and sit. And I always think that, oh, I'm going to run out and I don't have enough, but I always have way more left in that tube that will last me way longer than what I think. I will sometimes get halfway down something, serum, toner, whatever, and think, oh, I better order a new one because it takes a couple of weeks to get to me. The new thing gets to me and I'm still not done with the old things. So that happens quite a bit and I'm just really trying not to overbuy. So for those reasons, I usually just have one clay mask and right now it's this one. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so you can be notified every time I put a video up, which is Saturday mornings, usually at 10 in the morning Central Standard Time. I would love to hear from you and hear your ideas of what would you like to see on the channel? What kind of content? What are you interested in? What topics? Do you have any questions? You can leave me a comment or Find me on Facebook. I have a group called Korean Beauty Fanatics where you can post your own reviews and ask questions. We have almost 5,000 people on there now that are very, very helpful and readily share their vast experiences. So if you want more opinions versus just my own, please find me on there. You can also check out my blog kbeautyhobbit.com and my Instagram at kbeautyhobbit. I hope you are doing well. I hope you're staying as stress-free as possible and remember to take care of yourself. I will talk to you next Saturday. And until then, please remember to always listen to your skin. Thanks for watching. Bye.